All right. All right, last chapter of your um, uh, Algebra 135 year is chapter 10. Um, this lesson is going to be a preview of one of geometry's most important formulas. You have to memorize it, so uh, even if you don't get it perfectly down, you at least need to make sure you know enough to be able to survive it because anywhere you go from here, they assume you have seen the Pythagorean uh, something about right triangles, which is the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, right triangles are triangles that have a right angle of 90 degrees. Uh, Pythagoras, or a group of, called the Pythagoreans, which pretty much was him and a bunch of people who used to just meet and discuss uh, things that they recognized and um, come up with ideas, they noticed that the longest side had a direct mathematical relationship to the two shortest sides of a right triangle. So whenever you have a right triangle, you have a L-shaped right angle here. And based off of the general um, format of it, you have a leg and a leg that stems from the right angle. So if this is the right angle, the two parts coming from the right angle are the legs. And the right angle itself, if you imagine this being like an arrow, is pointing at what we call the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle. So any right triangle, no matter what it is, if that's your right angle, that's your hypotenuse. If you had it set up like this, and that's your right angle, then that would be your hypotenuse. So the key thing to every right triangle is to make sure you know the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always going to be the side that's most important for you to identify. So um, the general formula, just so you know, because I don't think I have it there, is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And the key thing to know is that this is always the hypotenuse. It doesn't matter what you put for a in terms of the two legs, doesn't matter what you put for b in terms of the two legs, but if you do not put this value at c, and you're going to have an issue. If you don't put this side at C, you're going to have an issue. If you don't put this side at C, you're going to have an issue. So the first thing you want to do whenever you get into the Pythagorean theorem is recognize what the hypotenuse is so you can actually have the numbers in the right spot. Again, A and B don't matter. Um, just make sure you know how to identify C. Anyway, the toughest part is the algebra involved, which really isn't that tough. Uh, just Let's just take a look at this real quick. So if you had A squared plus 7 squared equals 13 squared. The first thing you want to do is square everything that can be squared. So rewrite as a squared plus 49 equals 169, I believe it is. From there, you want to get the a squared alone. So you subtract 49. So it will be a squared equals 120. And then you just make sure you square root both sides. So a would equal whatever square root of 120 is, which would be about... I guess 10.9, actually 11.0, because if you round this to the nearest tenth, that five is going to bump it up, so it'll be about 11.0. But just so you know, that's how you find what you're looking for, okay? So if you had 4 squared plus b squared equals 10 squared, again, you square everything you have, so it'll be 16 plus b squared equals 100. You then move your 16, so b squared equals 84. I just subtract the 16 from both sides, and then you square root to get rid of the b squared, and you get b equals about uh, 9.2. So the key thing here is to know that we're not doing the plus or minus when we square root like we usually do because it doesn't make sense to have a negative length side. So we're just automatically ignoring it, although there was a rule we learned, I believe, in chapter 9, that any time you square root something, you put a plus or minus. We're not applying that here because, again, the negative side doesn't really make sense. It's not really the answer we're looking for. You can't have a negative 8-foot side. 8 squared, 5 squared equals c squared. Again, square both sides, 64, or square everything that can be squared, plus 25 equals c squared. In this case, we have to add them together because they're on the same side, so I believe that's 89 equals c squared. You then square root both sides. Or square root, yeah, square root both sides, and you end up with about 9.4. And so that is the solving portion of it. I don't think the solving part is really that hard. You just have to be careful and remember that whenever uh, the variable you're looking for is with a number that you're subtracting before you square root, and when the variable's by itself, which is c, you're adding before you square root. But the process itself is pretty simple. Um, now let's get formally introduced. Again, legs are the short sides of the right triangle, which as I said are A and B. The hypotenuse is the longest side, which is opposite of the right angle, which is C. All right. 
And then from there, let's just go ahead and get to the work and let you get to some practice and again, ask questions. Make sure when you're asking questions that you're showing me something that you did so I can tell you that you either set it up wrong or you solved wrong. Now, if you don't know how to set it up or you don't know how to solve it, that's here in the video, so you need to come back to the video. But again, if you solved it and got the wrong answer, let me see what you did. Uh, two legs of the right triangle measure eight, 17 and 8. Sketch the triangle, find the length of the third side. Notice it says the two legs, so it doesn't matter what kind of triangle you draw. Remember that the right angle gives you the two legs. So it would be 17 and 8. Notice how this doesn't look longer than that, but it does not matter. In geometry and these kinds of problems, all you need is a visual. And so this gives me a visual. So this would actually be C because that is across from the right angle. So because of that, and I do A squared plus B squared equals C squared, it doesn't matter which one you pick for A. So I'm just going to go ahead and go in order. So 8 squared plus 17 squared equals C squared. Square everything there so you get 64 plus 289. I had to memorize that when I was in school and it never went away. Add those two numbers together. I should be able to do that, but I'm not going to feel like it right now. Which is 353. And then last thing you do is round it to the nearest 10. So square root of 353 equals about 18.8 would be that number. And there you go. If you see this kind of problem and you're looking for the longest side and the answer you get is not bigger than the other two, which is I just kind of did a mental check to see does that make sense because is 18 the biggest side and it is. So again, what you see is that this does make sense because if that's across from the right angle, that should be the biggest side in the triangle. But if I were to get an answer like 12 something, then I know I probably put something in the wrong spot because this should always be the biggest. Doesn't matter about the order of these two, this should always be the biggest. Nothing should be bigger than the hypotenuse. It says the measure of a leg and hypotenuse are 10 and 27 respectively. Sketch the triangle, find a length. Again, does not matter how you draw it. Just draw a regular right triangle but it gives me a leg and a hypotenuse of 10 and 17 respectively. That means that the order they gave it to you is the same order they named it. Notice leg was first, 10 was first, so 10 would be your leg. 27 was stated second, hypotenuse was stated second, so 27 is your hypotenuse. Remember that's across from the right angle, which means I'm looking for something like B. Doesn't matter if I put A or B there again, these two can be switched around. Now I'll set it up, 10 squared plus B squared equals 27 squared. 100 plus b squared equals, I don't know what 27 squared is. Sorry, that's out of my range. 729, actually, I should have known that too. Um, then you go ahead and subtract the 100, so b squared equals 629. Then we square root both sides, so the square root of 629 is about 25.1. Again, plus or minus 25.1, but we don't care about the the negative 25.1 because it doesn't make sense in real life. All right. And remember that this process needs to be memorized. It needs to be understood. So make sure you understand it before this process is over, before your lesson is over, because you should know it. Because it's not that bad. You just got to make sure you know how to use it. So a jogger runs 1.5 kilometers south, then turns west if the jogger finishes 1.7 from the starting point, blah, blah, blah. So when this one, usually just start with a dot. Remembering that it goes north, south, I think it's east, west, I think, yeah, because that'd be New York, that's California. So north, south, east, west. So then I'd start from here and just draw a triangle that goes the way it said. Jogs 1.5 kilometers south and then turns west. So there you go. There's your two directions. So I will now label it. It went 1.5 south and then turns west. And then it says they stopped. 1.7 from the starting point. Remember, that's your starting point. This is where you stop, so that'll be 1.7, which means we're looking for this one. Again, they jogged 1.5 south, and then they turned west. They don't tell us how far they went, but they did say they stopped 1.7 away from the starting point, which means here's your right angle. That's your hypotenuse, so we would I would put something like x squared plus 1.5 squared equals 1.7 squared, and go through the whole game again. That'll be x squared. 15 squared is 225, but it's going to have two digits behind the decimal point, which means it should be 2.25. 17 squared is 289, but putting the decimals back in, it should be 2.89. Subtracting that, really you're just looking at 89 minus 25, so x would equal 0 0.64. 
And of course, the square root of 64 is 8. And of course, there are two digits behind. So I'm pretty sure that this is 0. 0.8. Let's see. I'm sorry, that should be x squared equals 0. 0.64. But let's see. Square root 0. 0.64 equals 0. 0.8, which again, it helps to use your math logic because again, that's going to kind of get you through some things. Then check yourself, of course, as I did with the calculator to make sure everything actually worked out like it's supposed to. So that's your problem there. But again, there are more types of problems on your homework, but there are already diagram for you. Just be careful to identify the hypotenuse first. That way you don't misplace a key variable and then make a mistake that you can't, well, I'm going to say that you can't fix, but that you'll have to fix. So outside of that, again, send me your help or send me your questions. Make sure you ask for help as you need to. Um, good luck. I'll talk to you later.